that are free. We're live streaming. We're live streaming right here on Facebook right now. So welcome everybody. So happy to see you here and we'll get started right now. Hi and welcome. My name is Josephine Perone and I am here delighted to be part of the Central Pennsylvania fourth annual theater and dance fest and what we are about to share with you right now to our delight and joy is um, the winner one of the three winners of the one act play playwriting uh, competition it's a great competition um, playwrights are invited to submit to us new plays that have not yet been produced and uh, from this enormous number of submissions, a group of judges choose, which will be read as part of our festival. This year we had 105 shorts, those are 10 minute plays, submitted and the group, the panel of judges winning that down to five. So that's an amazing uh, feat. We had 41 one act play is submitted and chose three and what we're about to read for you right now is a play called big top love so i'd like to invite the actors to please join me on screen if you haven't yet please turn on your video thank you and i'm also going to ask you to turn on your audio And I'm going to ask you to do one more thing for me this afternoon so that I don't butcher the pronunciations of everybody's last names. So I thank you so much. You ready to go, everybody? Okay. This play is called Big Top Love. And Big Top Love was written by Nicole DeSalle. We're just so happy to have Nicole with us. Uh, never happened before, but Nicole has had three of her plays accepted, two shorts and this one one act. We've had playwrights win in different years, but this is a first and we're so thrilled. Thank you, Nicole. Nicole DeSalle lives and writes in Iowa City, Iowa, where her play Oscar was recently produced by Iowa City Community Theater. Her one act play Imogene was read at the 2018 Pittsburgh New Works Festival and her short play Broken Bluebird will be performed at the 2021 New Play Development Workshop in August. Nicole has an MFA in Creative Writing from Texas State University. What will happen now is I will read you the, the list of characters and a short synopsis. The actors will take over and when the reading is completed, then we will have an opportunity to have a conversation between audience, actors, and playwright. We hope you enjoy. The play is entitled Big Top Love, written by Nicole DeSalle. The characters are Travis, a man in his 30s, a recent business school graduate from a small town. And Travis is being played by Jeff. Would you wave at us and introduce yourself, Jeff? Hi, I'm Jeff Buderbaugh. Uh, this is, I think, the third script that I'm reading yes, with Tempest. Sure. Thank you. Lydia is a woman who is 30, uh, in her 30s, rather, his date, a talent agent. I'm, Ari I'm, I'm Ariane Ryan. The homeless person, Clover Woman, 60s, 70s, an early 20th century small town school teacher. Joanne? Hi, uh, my name is Joanne Smith. Clover Mann, 25 to 30, a 1960s small town neighbor. Hi, I'm Drew Brown Bruce. And Clover Bartender is any gender, 40s to 50s, a present day small town bartender. Hi, I'm Randy Bedjori. Thank you all. The time is the present day. The setting is the outdoor patio of a Chicago cafe. Clover Woman, Clover Man, and Clover Bartender are representations of Travis's memory and imagination. Lydia should not see him, see them. When these characters speak, they should address the audience or talk to themselves. 
Travis may listen to them, but he should not interact with them. A synopsis. Travis believes that his hometown of Clover is cursed with low morale because of a circus train fire that happened over a hundred years ago. At a Chicago cafe, Travis enlists the help of talent agent Lydia to build a circus that he believes will revitalize his town. Lydia, perpetually unlucky in love, is frustrated by the unromantic purpose of their meeting. A firm believer that magic can be found in the ordinary and every day, she challenges Travis to consider whether big top thrills is as effective a remedy for loss as he once believed. Big top <clears throat> Travis and Lydia are eating and drinking wine at a table on the patio of a cafe. Behind them, a bar. Homeless person, shrouded in newspapers and her bulky clothing, sleeps on a bench in front of the patio. Lydia is enjoying herself. Travis seems less comfortable. At the sound of a passing train, Travis looks out toward the street, agitated. We're awful close to the track. Wonderful, isn't it? More like noisy. Once dusk hits, you can see right into the train cars. It'll be like our own private show. Not much of a show, just ordinary people. Ordinary can be breathtaking. Anyway, I don't think there's much that private living in the city. You sound like you don't like it much. It's a little overwhelming. I take it you aren't from Chicago? I'm from a small town called Clover. Where's that? Uh, about two and a half hours southwest of you, just over the state line. That's not far at all. Oh, it's a world away. Oh? The thing about Clover, it's a town with only one story, a story that's been told for nearly a hundred years now. Homeless person emerges from her layers, revealing herself to be Clover woman. Address the audience. We waited by the tracks. Everyone in the entire town. We were told we'd hear the music before we even saw the train. Then we'd see elephant trunks snaking from the cage cars and, and acrobats stacked up in formations right on top of the box cars. Clover man enters pushing a 1960s era lawnmower. That summer, every backyard in Clover was filled with kids playing pretend circus. This one a tightrope walker, that one a juggler. And whoever was the oldest in the group, the ringmaster. It didn't matter that no one had ever seen a circus before. Everyone's imagination told them what to say and how to move. Hours we waited by that, uh, the tracks for that circus train. But the circus train never came. But the circus never came. Why not? The Clover bartender enters and begins washing glasses behind the bar. No one knows what started the fire, only that it happened in the middle of the night. 68 railway cars. Hundreds of um, jugglers. Houstabouts. Burned to a crisp. Not a single survivor. That's terrible. Those days it could take a while for news to travel. Everyone arrived in the morning, and when dusk came, everyone was still standing there. Waiting. We waited for hours. Waited for spectacular. Amazing. Sensational. But the circus never came. Didn't come. Never did. That's sad. Can't seem to get over it. I thought you said it happened years ago. It did, but that circus lives so big inside me. All 68 train cars and every last roustabout. Anyway, that's why I wanted to meet you. Me? Your profile said you were a talent agent. Oh, that. Ever since I was a kid, I've known I had to do something about this circus that never was. Kind of like a calling? Exactly. At first, I thought I'd give the town a circus. Finally, after all these years, but... Nowadays, folks can travel to see a circus, and many of them do. It doesn't quite make up for what's missing. Missing? Something in everyone's voices when they talk. They could be talking about the weather or the price of corn, but their voices always sound like the end of that story. Circus never came. Never did. 
it's like a hopelessness seeped into my hometown and never left. Drive down Main Street and all you see is shuttered up businesses. Young people grow up and leave and never come back. So, what is it you want to do? I want to put a circus in Clover for good. And I'm not talking about a tent in the field where people pay their tickets for a night and leave. I mean, circus, everywhere you look. I'm not quite sure I follow. A main street lined with jugglers and clowns and... All the time. Cotton candy machines in the town square. Imagine lines strung between the street lamps so that when you stop at a traffic light, you look up, there's a tightrope walker inching her way across the wire. Wow, that's... Trapeze artists swinging between the trees. People won't be able to live and breathe without seeing circus at every turn. Step into the auto shop. The next thing you know, the strong man's hoisting up the front end of your car. The strong man? Visit the hardware store for a box of nails, and all those acrobats are tumbling over one another as they stock the shelves. Acrobats. And elephants walking along the sidewalk with the window shoppers. Elephants. You know, the main reason circuses are in decline is because of their poor treatment to animals. That fact alone might sink your battleship. One thing that surrounds Clover is lots of unused farmland. I'll build enclosures that are larger, more humane. This may be the biggest dream I've ever heard. That's what Clover needs, a dream bigger than its disappointment. That's, that's great, but I don't understand what this has to do with me. I need someone to find me circus people. One's willing to relocate to Clover and become our forever circus. I get people gigs in shampoo commercials and bit parts in daytime television. Her forever circus is not really my area. Is it anyone's? I'm blazing a trail here. Travis reaches into his satchel and pulls out a manuscript. Just got my MBA from Loyola. This business plan for Clover Circus, Inc. was my capstone project. I think you'll see that while my dreams may seem sensational, I'm no cockeyed optimist. So, that's what this meeting is about. You weren't mining the data apps for an actual date. Guilty. Why didn't you just contact the agency or track me down on LinkedIn? I didn't mean to catfish you. You lured me out on a date to tell me that it's actually not a date. That is the opposite of catfishing. I'm a serious businessman, but I want to build a permanent circus in small town America isn't likely to be taken seriously in the business world. But it is a great first date story. I was kind of crushing on you during that whole tightrope walker at the traffic light part. I think you're very pretty and smart. A great catch for someone. I get it. This project is all consuming. I can't lean into romance until I've launched my venture. I get it. I get it. You don't have to explain. Lydia leafs through the pages of the business plan. Impressive startup capital. Thank you. And you already have investors. Take a look at the graphs in section five. The increased tourism will bring a high return on investment. What's in it for my people? Here. The salary ranges I've determined are well above industry standard, even with job shortages being what they are. Job security will certainly be a draw. I'm not sure I could convince them all to drop anchor and clover for the rest of their lives, though. I expect some regular turnover, but that gives you an incentive. You'll have a long career ahead of you as the official talent strategist for Clover Circus, Inc. Talent strategist. I like it. I thought you might. So, you're in? I'd have to work on a freelance basis. The agency would never get involved in something this... Crazy? Innovative. So that sounds like a yes to me. I'm considering it, but... What? I'm a bit leery of your logic. How so? Your perception of Clover seems a bit skewed. I've lived there my whole life. Maybe you're so close to the situation you can't see it clearly. I don't follow. It's like you've lumped all of Clover's troubles into this one circus disappointment from years ago. Travel a few miles down the road to any other small town and you'll likely find the same shuttered up main street and low morale. So what's your point? I don't think you can hang it all on a circus that never came. It may not be the root cause, but it might be a way through. 
if I can show people something grand like a circus, if they wake up every morning to that kind of possibility, then, well, maybe things will start to change too. It's worked in lots of other towns. Oh, the lots of other towns with trapeze artists in the town square. I'm talking about geographic reinvention. Take Riverside, Iowa, for example. The birthplace of Captain Kirk? That's an invention. Captain Kirk said he was from Iowa, but he never named a town. Really? Sure. Just like Clover, Riverside was withering on the vine. So they filed some paperwork, and the next thing everyone knew, it was the birthplace of Captain Kirk. Yearly revenue from Trekfest turned everything around. Genius. And I'm not just talking about money. Now the people of Riverside hold their heads up high. It's not easy to boost morale in the flyover states, but it's not impossible either. Where is your section on endorsement? Excuse me? Endorsement. Endorsement from who? From the town. Something that ensures the people of Clover would welcome and support, as you say, a circus at every turn. Didn't you hear my story? What's that got to do with it? Everything? Clover is absolutely defined by the circus that never was. And I am giving them the ultimate circus. Have you discussed this plan with anyone? Well, city officials. No. Business owners. No. Parents, ministers, the Rotary Club. I want it to be a surprise. You've completed two years of business school. Three. Three years of business school and drafted this entire business plan for a surprise. How can I possibly tell anyone? What if something falls through? Then it would be like, welcome to Clover, the town where the circus never came and then never came again. But without endorsement, how can I assure the performers any kind of job security? They'll need to know their talents are welcome, especially if they'll be living there. Unfortunately, that point is non-negotiable. It's an incredibly risky point. I don't see why. Listen, I can visualize the big day. That day when the people look out from their windows and see Bozo the Clan delivering their mail. That is such a good idea. In the beginning, it will be the stuff of legend. You'll have a few magical weeks, maybe a few months even. But what happens when... When what? When it changes. How could it? I'd like to argue that it most definitely will. How? That you mentioned tourism. That's good financially, but it will totally reshape the town. Damn all the cars with their out-of-state plates. Damn the chain hotels. Next thing you know, there'll be a hard rock cafe. And even if you win Humanitarian of the Year, the animals will still be a problem. Why? Old town smells like crap. Every hour on the hour, the crap shovelers are in the parks and the streets. In between shifts, they drink. So now every day I have a bar full of crap smelling, crap shoveling drums. And you know what they say about familiarity. All day, every day, that same tangy tune. Da 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 a clown is just a pedophile painted up like a party. Soon, everyone will wish the circus never came. Should have never came. Wish it never did. Stop. Stop. Don't tell me anymore. I'm sorry. Sorry. You are evil. The reason the circus lives in the hearts and minds of people is because it's a break from the ordinary. The moment you make that circus a permanent fixture, you'll begin to stink, literally. You don't believe that. I do. I know you don't believe it. You said so in your profile. Said what? You said, I don't care if you're short or tall or even what kind of music you like. So long as you're brave enough for big top love. I didn't write that. You did. I, I don't even know what that means. Right That's here. Look. Travis takes out his phone, opens his dating app, shows it to Lydia. I don't remember writing that. How can you not remember your own profile? I must have written it years ago. It's a brand new app. 
I probably cut and pasted from one of the other dozens of sites that I'm on. You're on a dozen dating sites. Isn't everyone? No. What do you know? You're not even dating. It's just... What? Nothing. What? You've been on a dozen apps for years, so why isn't it working? Who says it isn't working? Maybe I want to date forever. Then it would be working quite well, right? But that's not what you want. How do you know? Because it says so in your profile. Big top love. Stop saying that. Do you want to date forever? Sure. You don't. You're infuriating. I'm right. You're not. I am. You are. I am. Wait, I am? Yes, all right. I don't want to date forever. So why isn't this working out for you? You don't ask a person that. Why not? You just don't. I'm just trying to help. I don't need help. It's nothing to take personally. It just seems like you need a good brainstorming session. I'm good at that. Don't you think I haven't done that? Sorry, I... Do you think I walk around in a state of oblivion, never asking myself why the one thing I want more than anything else on earth, the thing that everyone else seems to catch as easily as a cold, is completely impossible for me to come even close to? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to upset you. Take tonight. You think this is the first time this has happened to me? Other dates have asked you to cast a circus? Commercials, reality TV shows, game shows. Oh. God, the game show guys are the worst. I guess I can see how your job would attract a lot of self-promotional types. My luck was lousy even when I wasn't a talent agent. Everyone gets in a rut. A rut. A rut is when you can at least look back to the great life stories of your past. I would welcome a rut because then at least I know that love actually exists. Instead. Instead what? My life, it feels like it's in black and white and there's a switch somewhere. And if I could just turn it on, my life would be in color. But I can't find the switch. Everyone else seems to find it and I can't. So all I can do is. All we could do was wait by the tracks. The sound of a passing train. Lydia begins to cry softly. She hums through her purse for a tissue. Travis hands her his handkerchief as Clover bartender clears the table. I waited for a child, but none ever, but none ever came. I used to say that being a school teacher meant I had more children than anyone. In some ways that's true. I never told anyone this. But every year on the first day of school, I would imagine this little girl walking into the schoolroom. To tell you the truth, it was an imagination, a, a sighting, if you will. Smile like her missing front teeth were something to show off. Every year she came. Every year she was a little older. She lived in a village, no bigger than Clover, but uh, by the ocean. Her letters smelled like the sea. Three years, we, we sent letters and photographs too. She sent one of the shrine in her village and another of the fishing boats all lined up along the dock. One day she wrote and she told me she was thinking about marrying a man from her village. She said she laid awake at night trying on two different lives. One much like the one she was living, the other with me. The one with me made her smile bigger, she said. But the one with him was a story that had begun long before she'd even been born. We called ourselves Tornado Junction. Andy Barron sang lead, Bill Sorensen was our guitarist, and Kevin Driscoll played bass. I was the drummer. That summer, our future fame seemed so real we could taste it. We talked about the cities we go to and the gigs we play as if we'd already been scheduled. One year on the first day of school, she didn't come. I never named that little girl. I went through a bunch in my head, but none of them ever seemed to quite fit. Anyway, one year, 
she didn't come. That was the last letter she ever wrote me. For a while, I'd looked out my window and imagine her standing at the end of my front walk. It didn't end all at once. It just kind of came apart gradual, like Bill got a job and couldn't get rehearsal so much. And then Andy up and got married. I kept that old drum set for years. For a while, I sit down and tap out the keys from our old songs. Hear the whole band in my head. I kept thinking she'd show up eventually. For a while, I look out my window. Imagine her standing at the edge of my front walk. Sometimes I'd sit down, tap out the beats from our old songs and hear the whole band in my head again. But she never did come. She was never there, of course. These days, I can't remember a darn one of them. You're wrong, you know. About what? You said it would have been better if you'd known love and lost it. Trust me, it's not. I'm sorry. Something recent? High school. But it still feels like yesterday. That's a long time to be still broken up about it. Do people really get over things? Or do they just move through life, keeping that broken part hidden away? Did she leave you for someone else? They wanted different things. Oh? I wanted to move back to Clover and teach. And she wanted city life. She wanted all the cities. This circus plan of yours. You ever think that maybe it has something to do with what happened? What makes you say that? Just, I don't know. Small towns are a bit like jilted lovers. The world around them changes, but they stay pretty much the same. I finished college. I went to business school. Maybe things that stay the same are just the underdogs you like to root for. I'd be lying if I said I hadn't imagined the look on Claire's face, seeing Clover all transformed. That was her name? Yeah. I'm sure she'd be impressed. I'm not so sure. Lydia's phone makes a boing sound. Someone's interested. What? That's our app. The dating app, I mean. Oh. Clever. What is? Cupid's arrow striking. Oh, I never noticed that before. You should check it out. I can't stand people who look at their phones on dates. This isn't a date, remember? Come on, look at it. I'm curious. If you insist. So, what's he say? Got two tickets for Big Top Love. Interested? No way. No one's ever mentioned it before. You have to message him back. I don't know what to say. Right. You bet. I'm one clown short of a circus. That's hideous. It's perfect. What does it mean to you? What? Big top love. What does it sound like it means? Like you're looking for excitement? That is what it sounds like, but I'm actually the kind of person who, I'd be happy just strolling through the aisles of a grocery store with someone, picking on ingredients for taco night. I think ordinary things can be. Breathtaking. It's quite a word. That's what you said. When? During dinner. Well, it's true, but most of the time we're too blinded by disappointment to notice. The sound of an approaching train. What is it? That little boy swinging on the handrails. <laughs> little monkey. It was the trapeze artists. What was? I was dating this guy. It was a couple of years ago after I just got hired by the agency. I had to go out of town for this training convention in Denver and I hate to fly. It terrifies me, always has. I asked him to go with me and at the last minute her, anyway, I'm on the plane alone and I'm having my usual near meltdown. Meltdown. It feels like my head becomes disconnected from my body. 
breathing up. I can't figure out how to do it because even as I imagine trying to pull air in through my nose and my mouth, it seems like it has nowhere to go because. Because your head isn't connected to your body. Right. So I'm on the plane trying to remember how to breathe and to calm myself down. I start flipping through the movie options and there's a recording of Cirque du Soleil. Awesome. I thought it was actually kind of creepy. Um, all those clowns moving across stage in exaggerated ways. And then they get to the part with the trapeze artists. And you like that? No, not a first. I remember thinking it seemed kind of pointless. All of that swift, graceful movement just to swing back and forth between the platforms. First one trapeze artists will swing, then the next, like, big deal. It's a pretty big deal, actually. But then they got to the part where they catch each other. And that's when something shifted. All I could do was watch in awe as the flyer released her hands from the trapeze, tumbled through the air, and landed squarely in her partner's grip. It blew my mind. They made it seem so effortless. Big top love. I realized that maybe, well, here I was, flying solo yet again. Usually when I travel alone, I feel so defective. But as I watched these trapeze artists, I considered for the first time that maybe I'm just unwilling to settle for anything less than what they have. Which is? Complete trust, perfect symbiosis. Message him back. Maybe he's the one to catch you. I don't know. The night is young. There's still time to meet up with him. Okay. One clown short of circus? Really? You got something better? Very well. Go ahead. <sighs> Hunter Buck says that he won't write back. The phone makes the boing sound. <laughs> sure you want to take that bet? He wants to meet me in an hour at Beto's. That's not far from my place. I can walk you. Okay. Except we haven't exactly settled things. Settled? Your circus. Do you still want me to cast it? Oh. Gosh, for some reason, that suddenly seems like an idea from another lifetime. I didn't mean to discourage you. It's not that, it's just... Bartender enters with a dessert cart. It is brimming with circus snacks, bags of popcorn, cotton candy, and caramel apples. Dessert? That looks good. You've got a date to get to. I don't think I can resist. You can't keep him waiting. We have a few minutes. Lydia takes a cotton candy from the cart. I may as well indulge. Travis takes a caramel apple and a bag of popcorn from the cart. Bartender exits. There is the sound of an approaching train. Here comes the train again. You really love people watching, huh? I do. Can't explain why. Travis and Lydia lean forward. They watch the train cars in awe, eating their snacks like kids. Clover Woman, Clover Man, and Clover Bartender step forward and look as well. As they watch, they become increasingly amazed. Faintly, in the background, the sound of circus music. Amazing! Spectacular. Sensational. Isn't it wonderful? Breathtaking. End of play. Thank you all so very much. Would all of the actors uh, uh, please unmute and show your um, show your faces, please? And those of you who are 